Hey, Bankless Dow. I'm here with Stefan George from Gnosis. He's the co-founder. It's really exciting to be here with you today. How are you? Thanks for having me. Doing great. Enjoying Barcelona. Yeah. Um, so what has been your favorite part of ETH Barcelona so far? Good question. So I, I really like how they put attention to detail. So they really have a lot of like, I don't know, small things that makes it experience rather than just a conference. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have like an arcade set up. If we really, like uh, yesterday, there was like a, a band playing some very nice music. So I really pay attention to a lot of details. So like, like a lot. Of yeah. I think a lot of crypto revolves around culture and they've really tried to inject that culture here into the event. And that's something I definitely like about this one as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell us a little bit about Gnosis. I think most of us within Bankless Tower are familiar. Um, we're all, we have all been using multi-sig SAPES, which began on Gnosis and I know they've split off now. Yeah. Um, and so what is Gnosis focusing on right now? Correct. Like, yeah, Gnosis has a long history. Mm -hmm. A lot of different projects have been created within Gnosis. They became partially independent or fully independent. Uh, now we are focusing on Gnosis chain, which is, uh, its own blockchain network mm -hmm. running on the exact same stack as Ethereum. Mm -hmm. There's uh, an EVM. It is EVM, but about not only EVM compatible, it also runs its own beacon chain. So okay. contrary to all the other uh, networks, we have our own beacon chain, which allows us to really have a highly decentralized network. So we have about 130,000 validators securing the network. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Ethereum has about 500,000. Um, so in terms of number of validators, node operators is one of the most decentralized networks out there. And uh, of course, that's something that we value very highly at Gnosis, is decentralization. Mm -hmm. It's kind of obvious if you work in blockchain, that should be one of the core values, sure. but sometimes it's good to emphasize this again. And yeah, like the, the beacon chain consensus allows you to have a very highly decentralized, uh, network mm -hmm. and that for us, the underlying uh, network for many applications running on top of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to touch on Gnosis pay in just a moment. Um, I know PO apps are currently using the Gnosis chain. Correct. What are some other notable projects that use Gnosis chain? So there's lots of different uh, projects as an open network as Ethereum, so anyone can deploy, obviously. Uh, Port is, is big, but we also have uh, Circles, UBI. Um, we have Azuro, which is a widely used um, prediction market platform. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of games being played on, on those chain as well. Like uh, many of you have probably played the Dark Forest game, mm -hmm. uh, which is also running on top of Gnosis. Uh, Nefarium is another uh, game which is popular. It's running on Gnosis. So Gnosis kind of became uh, a place for a lot of gaming activity as well because of cheap transaction fees. Uh, it also became a, a field for experimentation. So some of the DSI protocols are also using uh, Gnosis chain. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's an open network. A lot of is going on, probably a lot that I'm not even aware of. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, so with regards to, to Gnosis pay, uh, this is something that you launched, I believe last year, and you're trying to sort of innovate within the payments market. So, uh, tell us a bit about that. Right. Yeah. Actually it has not launched yet. The actual launch is going to happen at ECC. So in about about one and a half weeks from now. Maybe I'm conflating the sort of the beta launch that you had last year. Yeah, that's right. Like it's like a, some internal testing, mm -hmm. uh, sort of internal beta version that was going on already last year. Um, but now we are ready to ship it to the world right. and then make everyone part of it. So Gnosis Pay is the first decentralized payment network, like a, a layer two running on top of Gnosis chain optimized for payments. Mm -hmm. And if you think about payments or blockchain, like even if you look at the original white paper that Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, it was creating a like peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system mm -hmm. for payments. <laughs> yes. And the first most famous transaction that was done on, on, on Bitcoin was someone buying a pizza with, I think, 10,000 Bitcoin. Yeah. It turned out to be a very bad deal. Uh, but it was... It depends on how mid this pizza was, I'm sure. It was mm -hmm. man, it must have been a really good <laughs> pizza. <laughs> But this was the original intent uh, behind creating something like Bitcoin. It was not meant to be a store of value. It was meant to be something that's useful right. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Today, even the biggest Bitcoin maximalist would not claim that Bitcoin is used for payments. Maybe some people would still argue Lightning could potentially be used for payments, but it's also not technically feasible, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the question is like, why did you fail in creating infrastructure for payments, which that's an obvious use case? And uh, I think there were lots of reasons. Actually, I think Vitalik recently 
um, wrote this blog post about like the three transitions that need to happen in terms of scalability, in terms of uh, user experience, and in terms of privacy. Right. right. Those are the three things that are also very much needed in order to perform payments. Mm -hmm. I think we did a lot of work on at least the first two, meaning with layer tools, we can scale. <laughs> uh, with the color extraction, we can create much better UX. Mm -hmm. So we already have this through the safe contracts. We can enable the count abstraction mm -hmm. in a way that allows really great UX experience as users are used to from web two. Yes. And now Nosis Pay is basically using these best kind of ingredients, like having a layer two optimized for payments. Mm -hmm with account abstraction built in using safe contracts to enable uh, payments. And uh, of course, for payments, there's another big issue, which is uh, it's kind of a two-sided marketplace. Um, you need to have customers who have the infrastructure to pay, and you have to have merchants to accept whatever the customers want to use for payments. Of course. And uh, right now, there's, of course, some dominant players in the field of payments, specifically Visa Card and MasterCard. Mm -hmm. And uh, they serve over 80 million merchants, right? And so what we did now with Nosis Pay is we created a bridge between the old world, Visa and MasterCard, the old world, yes, uh, or the current world, and blockchain. So we allow users to pay anywhere where Visa and MasterCard are accepted, so 80 million merchants, uh, with any crypto that you're avoiding. And that is Gnosis Pay, and that runs on decent infra infrastructure. It's the first time that you can use a non-custodial account to pay anywhere where you otherwise would use a regular uh, credit or debit card. Okay, so that addresses the merchants, but what about customer acquisition? How do you plan on addressing that? Very good question. So we see Gnosis Pay as a B2B offering. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk to wallets uh, to issue their own cards. Mm -hmm. They have their own customer base. Um, and we want them to create more utility for the customers by offering a card. Mm -hmm. So there can be a card for many different wallets. You probably use a couple of those or many different projects, also DAOs, mm -hmm. uh, to have their own branded cards that allows the users to spend what they have in their wallet anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's the goal with NOSPEC. Well, this is something that we're very interested in because obviously within Bankless DAOs, many of you know, we have Bankless Card. Uh, and we're seriously looking at Gnosis Pay as as a payment supplier for the bankless card ecosystem. Um, so B2B, B2C, and then hopefully we can onboard the billions that we need to to really find the traction in the space. We would love to work together, of course. Like I think uh, bankless, we've been following for a very long time, of course. Um, I think you guys do great work. And uh, I think it's a very, for me, it's kind of obvious, bankless, like how do you go actually bankless? Yes. I have to kind of still build a bridge, obviously. You cannot operate only in crypto. And I think this card is actually a great enabler for us to, to build this bridge mm -hmm. and make users do a lot more transactions. So even for myself, I think about how many transactions do I do in crypto versus how many times do I use my card to pay something, right? Like it is a lot more transactions still with like regular fiat compared to crypto. Of course. And I hope with this initiative, we can flip this and uh, we turn more users into actually doing a lot more crypto transactions, being more crypto native. And uh, yeah, I think we're not far away from this. I think all the pieces have been built. Now it's only about uh, assembling them in a way that is really user-friendly mm -hmm. um, and allows everyone to participate. Yes, that sort of user experience to get people onboarded with the with the lowest barrier to entry as possible, I think, is is certainly key to that user acquisition. Exactly, and not changing user behavior. That's why the card's so important, right? Mm -hmm. Like, user just is used to the pay and use Apple Pay and whatever, mm -hmm. right? And you don't want to change this user experience because then you're going to lose a lot of users. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, great. Well, as they say, we are still early, but I believe we are on the precipice of cracking this nut and really finding mass adoption. So I'm excited to see what you guys are about to launch and I really can't wait to use it myself. Awesome, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for joining us today, Stefan. And I uh, can't wait to hear your announcements at ETHCC uh, in a week and a bit. Yes, yeah, awesome, yeah, thanks for having me. Okay. Also very excited. All right, cheers. Cool. Cheers.